Merry Christmas and welcome to St. Luke's on the Lake to this 4 p.m. Christmas pageant and family service. Boys and girls, parents, we are about to go on a journey, a very unique journey to tell the Christmas story. And we're gonna do it in a very participatory fashion. And I am so excited to be joined by Lori Ann, our Director of Family and Children's Ministry. My name is Father Justin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's on the Lake. Now, before we begin this journey, at St. Luke's, we begin everything with prayer. Tonight is no different on this special, most holy night. So let's bow our heads. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, there is nothing quite like the pageant. Every Christmas Eve is, is anchored by that children's pageant. And this year is no different. And I'm so excited to hear from Lori Ann about our pageant and all the hard work that went into it and, and the wonderful gift of children telling the story of Jesus. One of my favorites too, Justin. So every year here at St. Luke's, we invite anyone who happens to to come to our service, the four o'clock service, to dress up as an angel or a shepherd or an animal of some sort. And then we listen to the Christmas story. We read it from the book of Luke and we intersperse it with a few songs uh, led by um, one of our own parishioners who does a fabulous job. Um, Lynn, thank you, Lynn. Um, this year's no different. We have Lynn le leading our songs and we have you your children dressed up to be part of the nativity story so I am very very grateful that those parents took the time to take pictures and videos and send them in and it's just gonna be it'll be it'll be a great time are you ready oh I'm so ready let's, I am so ready to hear this pageant let's let's watch let's watch and listen Joyful are 
This is the second lesson, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a surveyor, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, was that great or what? Did you enjoy that? Absolutely loved it. Boys and girls, what a fantastic job at telling the story of Jesus. Yep. I want to thank every single one of you, the parents, the kids, um, just thank you for being willing to share a little bit of, of your own story in our nativity pageant. Um, I just, I loved, I loved every single, every single one. They were so I did. Good. You know, it's always special to hear the story of Jesus um, every year at Christmas because that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about Jesus telling coming into our into the world, God becoming like you and me. Right. Boys and girls, just think about that, like us, like the way we are, comes in out of a great abundance of love to care for us, to show that love. And I, would, I want you to just take a moment, boys and girls, and think about that first Christmas night. Let's go to, let's go to Bethlehem, let's go to the shepherds in the field, you know, just out there doing their thing, and then all of a sudden angels appear and say, hey, you got to get to this place called Bethlehem. It's cold. There's nothing special about Bethlehem. And they're this miraculous gift of God with us. And that's why we use the word Emmanuel, God with us. God's with you, with me. God's in our hearts. God's here right now in our worship, in our conversation. And that's the Christmas story. And it's so important we remember that because God moved in such great love for us so that we can better love each other and love God. And that's what I want you to remember as we do our activities uh, this evening in our worship together. There's gonna be times where we're gonna encourage you to go do some things together as families. And, and I think you will find power if you take a step back and remember that we're doing this from a place of love because that's the Christmas story. It's, all, it's a little bit more than just remembering that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It's about embodying, taking on all those things Jesus asked us to, to think about, like loving each other, caring for each other, forgiving each other. And that's what tonight's all about. We lift that beauty up. So, that's a major tradition for me is seeing and hearing the pageant. Now, I think, Lorianne, you have other Christmas traditions that are beacons of God's love in the world. So let's, let's hear about those. Well, I have some, uh, I have several traditions um, that our families do together. Um, 
one of, one of them is probably one of my favorites just because it is a, a coming together and we show love to each other and this way we we decorate our Christmas tree every year and we don't decorate it until everybody's home so that means that college kids have to get home from college and and uh, my son always puts the tree together for us it's a big nine and a half foot tree um, and then we take time to put the ornaments on and laugh and and just have fun have fun with it and another one of course being from Austin is well this is how I remember it styrofoam cup I don't normally drink out of styrofoam cup you know but I had some really good hot chocolate in a styrofoam cup and that was at the Trail of Lights because you know if you're in Austin you got to do the Trail of Lights so um, those are a couple of my traditions what do you think I like it I like it so we share uh, we share the hot cocoa you know um, boys and girls growing up we had I had my grandfather and I were very close and I was fortunate that he lived very close to me and we would we would sometimes build a fire and we'd have hot chocolate he made just the best hot chocolate um, and it just you know because he dumped his love into it I mean it was it was a drink of love he made it with real chocolate it was just delicious and that was kind of our special thing but I will say there are two other traditions that um, I think boys and girls y'all may also share with me and, and there are two Lorianne there's the decorating of the Christmas cookies mm -hmm. and then there was decorating the tree as you said mm -hmm. um, and what made the cookies and the tree so special is we did it as a family. We would get the tree together, we'd decorate the tree, we would decorate the cookies, we'd make the biggest mess, and we'd laugh, 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 laugh. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? Just yeah. laughing and Just being together joy. as a family. Yeah, you know, finding joy. Uh, and we would always do the cookies on Christmas Eve. We never did them before because it was Advent. And my mother, being the strict Catholic that she was, <laughs> you did not celebrate Christmas till it was Christmas. There you go. Um, so it was a great opportunity for us to be together. And you know, Lorianne, I think it's a great time for us to um, to let the let the kids and family stop here and maybe a good idea. share a little love with one another before we continue on. Yes. What you got in store for them? Well, just take a moment. Just go ahead and pause the video here and um, just get together as a family. Just. Um, share some stories um, maybe I better idea would be go and make something for each other serve each other um, make it make some hot chocolate pour pour up a glass of, uh, of nice ice cold milk make sure you save some for Santa by the way um, and but do something and take a little bit of time just to share some time together I think that'd be a good idea right now I think that's a great idea why don't we let them do that and we'll see you in just a few minutes Boys and girls, I hope you had a great time getting some hot cocoa, some cookies, some milk. Mm -hmm. What a great idea, Lorianne, for them to do that. You know, and it reminds me that one of the things we've been doing at my house uh, here coming up, leading up to this, this evening, to Christmas Eve, is going out and looking at all the wonderful Christmas lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And living down in Rough Hollow, down in Lakeway in the hill country, mm -hmm. you know, we're fortunate to be able to drive up a hill right on our street. And I can see all out around Lake Travis. I can see Old Lakeway. And you just see lights for miles. Just every roof line. So, so almost, fun. it feels like every roof line. Almost every roof line has lights. Yeah. And it just lights up the night. And it just sends that warm feeling of that connection I've been talking about. Yeah. We're together, Absolutely. we're decorating. And then in some houses, you know, it's pretty crazy. You're talking about your nine and a half foot tree. Up on top of the hill, there's a couple houses on another hill that their tree is so big we can see it because of the lights on the tree. Oh, we can wow. see their tree from this hilltop. Oh, that's fun. And that's you know, fun. earlier we were talking about how we both have the tradition of decorating mm -hmm. our tree, and I, I think we brought some special ornaments we to share indeed. because we did indeed. those ornaments for me, boys and girls, um, are special, they have a special significance. And again, talking about that love, these ornaments have so much love to share. Why don't you go first, Lorianne, and talk about your ornament? Okay, well, I will. Um, so, um, I don't know that you know about. Don't know if you know this about me, but um, I I collect hearts. We I have my kids used to find rocks in the shape of hearts. Um, I have a teapot that's in the shape of a heart. I have lots of lots lots of hearts, and so um, 
my husband, when even before we got right before we got married, when we were engaged, he gave he started the tradition of giving me a heart ornament. Every year I get a different heart ornament, except for that one year where I got two of the same. Anyway, but that's a different story. And so the the point is is that um, this was the very first heart ornament that he gave me um, whenever we, after we got engaged and. What this is, stands for is this was going to be our family. It was him and me and my daughter. And right from the very beginning, he knew that he wanted to be all in. He was committed to love us as a family, just like God loves us as a family, by the way. Um, and so this is this this assortment is very, very special to me, very special to me for that reason. That is so awesome. So awesome to talk about love on such a special night. And I think the same is true for me, boys and girls. This this ornament right here is um, is a special ornament that I share with my grandfather. It's a gift to him. And what it is, I, if you can see it, is a little fish. It's a bass. And what it says on it is it says, Early to bed, early to rise, fish all day, tell big lies. And boys and girls, this uh, one of the things I used to do with my grandfather every Christmas, whether it be Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or both, we would go fishing. And now fishing in the wintertime, Lorianne, not, not always the best. <laughs> But the fun we would have, the stories we would tell, even the lies, and boys and girls don't lie, it's not good to no, lie, no. but something no. about fish tales we'd call them, we'd make up about this, that, and the other, just brought so much laughter to our hearts. And these ornaments and these Christmas trees that we put up are a reminder to me, uh, I think, really, they kind of point us, again, back to Bethlehem, back to Jesus, back to those, those gifts that God gives to us each and every day. I thank God every day for my grandfather and the opportunity I had to, to have him in my life for the time that I did and to share these wonderful memories. So when I look at this ornament, it doesn't make me sad. It makes me joyful that God loved me enough to let me have that grandfather and let me have these stories, not just with my grandfather, but my dad and my brother. It was really special. So this is just one of many special ornaments on my tree that just take me back. I bet, I bet the kids have special ornaments too. I bet their families have special ornaments that mean a lot to them. Do you? I was thinking maybe we should, we should let them pause here. It's a good idea. So boys and girls, why don't we pause here? Go get your ornament as a whole family. Everybody pull their ornament off the tree. Make sure you ask your parents' permission first. Don't grab the tree without your parents' permission. <laughs> and then pull the ornament off the tree. And then I want you to go and tell each other why that's a special ornament. And then when you come back, you're going to watch a cool skit. It's going to just be really humorous, Lori. <laughs> it's kind funny. of, again, furthering this conversation about what Christmas is all about. So I want you to talk about your ornament, come back, watch the skit, and then we'll see you on the other side of the skit. All righty. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, you got some, huh? You got some stuff on your nose? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you seen him? No, it's my first day. Yeah, mine too. This may be the best day of my life. <laughs> I know. He just oozes kindness, you know? If he walked in here right now, I would totally turn into a snow puddle. They say that his eyes just radiate with love and, and candy, but mostly love. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. They say that he makes you feel like you are the only person in the room. Have you ever seen how the children's faces just light up when they see him? The hope that he spreads? I can't hardly contain myself right now. <laughs> you imagine being friends with him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I know. <laughs> Sometimes there aren't enough words to express how amazing he is. We should celebrate him all year round. If it were up to me, we would. His love, his grace coming to this earth to save us. Come on, guys. Let's go celebrate Jesus' birthday. Just FYI, I was, I was talking about Jesus the whole time. Oh, I was too. Mm -hmm. I, I 100% was talking about Jesus. Same page, same yeah. page. <laughs> Lorian, I bet you thought this was going to be all about Santa Claus, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Well, it started out that way, and it, that was a fun skit. I'm glad we got to see that. I am too. But I'm what too. it did remind me of is that it is all about Jesus. It's all about Christ um, and His coming. So I think it's time to light the Christ candle. What do you think? I think that's great, and I want to hear more about this wonderful Advent wreath you have okay, sitting sure. next to you. Tell me a little bit more about that as we begin to light those candles. Okay. Well, in elementary Sunday school, which we do on Zoom, um, each child got to make their very own individual advent wreath and so each week we were able to light each of the candles sometimes those lighters just don't want to work yeah, do they? sometimes they just don't do they all right here we go there all right so we were going to light the candle of hope candle of peace i'll skip over here and do my pink one the candle of joy and the candle of love now that's what we we let each one each week and now since it's christmas eve we're going to light this white one right here in the middle and that's called the christ candle and it's white because it represents the purity of jesus the purity of christ um so if you at at home if you have your own personal advent wreath ready or you have an advent wreath with your family or even if you don't have an advent wreath you have a candle Let's take a moment to light it, or you can do it at the end of our service today, and it'll help remind you that um, Jesus is here, and He came for us. Yeah, and you know, and another thing I want you to remember, too, is I bet many of you have these. This is my stocking, and tonight I'm going to hang it up, and I probably, like many of you boys and girls, are so excited about Santa Claus coming to fill this thing up. You know, Lori and I get so excited to see what I'm going to get for Christmas, and, uh, and Santa Claus is is the embodiment of Christmas. I don't want to dismiss Santa Claus from Christmas Eve. I mean, of course we're excited about Santa Claus. And Santa Claus is going to give freely all these wonderful gifts that are made with all the elves, and he's going to fill our stockings. And we're going to be so excited to open those wonderful gifts tonight. But when we do that, or tomorrow, I mean, when we do that, though, I want us to remember that God fills our stocking, too. And God fills our stocking with love and hope and peace and joy. Every one of those candles we've lit through Advent and the ones that we just lit now are representative of the many gifts that God gives you and me. And each one of us has our own unique set of gifts. But also, we have a job to do. When you wake up tomorrow and you race out there to see your stocking, I want you to remember that you need to fill, your, fill Jesus' stocking as well. There's an empty stocking laying there. And that's the stocking we fill by giving back to God our love, our hope, our peace, our joy. And we do that by caring for one another, caring for each other, caring for this wonderful world that God's given us. And that's how we fill up Jesus' stocking, by being the disciples that Jesus calls us to be, to love people like Jesus loves us, to forgive people like Jesus forgives us. So just remember, boys and girls, when you grab your stocking in the morning, it is about Jesus, and it is very much about how much God loves us. So I want you to get so excited, and then I want you to take that with you long after Christmas, each and every day. Imagine how you can fill Jesus' stocking, because this is just the beginning of the story. Now, I had this funny thought, Lorianne. Can I hear from Lego? I feel okay. like I miss Lego. I need to hear what he has to say about all um, this. He, can de you? he definitely has something to say. Can uh, you go find him? Sure, sure. I'll go find him. Just a second. I'll be right back. Hey, Lego. Lego. Lego, where are you? Lego, where are you? Lego, 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 be very, very, very still. Lego, why are we whispering? Because it's Christmas. Christmas? Because of the baby. The baby? You know, 
Silent night, holy night. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. The little Lord Jesus asleep in the hay. The baby. So shh. Yes, I suppose we should be quiet, you know, worshipful. Like the shepherds were, I reckon. Yes, like the shepherds. When they listened to the words of the angel in the field and came to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. But the angels acted differently, didn't they? They shouted their praises to God on the hillside outside of Bethlehem. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of Bethlehem a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace, goodwill toward men. And someday we will worship with Jesus with shouts of gladness. Yes, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Yippee! Lego, shh. You'll wake the baby. Oops. Sorry, little baby. I guess your birth is too exciting to keep quiet about. I think you're right, Lego. Sometimes our Christmas worship is quiet. We peer into the manger. And quietly worship our baby king. You know, I know the perfect song for us to sing that's so worshipful that you sang your own rendition of earlier. What's that? Silent night. Oh, silent night. Holy night. All right. Okay, let's sing that song. Why don't we worship quietly by singing silent night? Okay. Good night, little baby. Sleep tight. Good night, Lego. Good night, Pastor. Okay, let's sing now. Let's sing. that a beautiful rendering of Silent Night? I love that and I love that song so much just it just it's a good culmination to the whole evening. So. You know Lorraine I have enjoyed being here worshiping with you in this very creative way and, and being able to kind of guide the children through the the Christmas story and thank you what it's yeah. all about so thank you for being here with us. Absolutely and thank you I appreciate it everything that you all, all the way you were able to tie everything together I loved it I loved it. You, did what Jesus would do. Well, I appreciate that. Now, boys and girls, before we go, there, we have some important work to do. And that is we need to take a moment, offer prayers for our little, our friends, for our neighbors, for those little things in our life that are really important. We gotta remember, even on this most joyful night, that this is a hard night for some in our world. So I wanna just take a moment and call attention to some areas of our life that might need prayer. Some of the things we pray for every Sunday. So let's lift up those in our minds, our friends that we know, our family who might be sad tonight. And let's pray that God surrounds them with joy and hope. Let's pray for those who maybe don't have a warm bed or a warm roof uh, to be in tonight, those who are homeless. And maybe they'll find shelter, that God will bless them with that and give us the hands and feet to respond to those. And let's give thanks for all the blessings God's given us. Let's give thanks for this wonderful country, for all our friends, our family. 
Let's lift up what God calls us to do, calls us to love. Let's pray that God gives us the strength to go out and love this Christmas Eve and in this Christmas season to care for others. And let's also lift up those who we we love but see no longer, those who've gone on to be with Jesus. Let's lift those up in our minds. And let us pray. Most gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you be with all of us this evening. Be with those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who are joyful. Be with all the boys and girls, all their families. Surround them with your love and grace. Be with those who are suffering and let them find your hope and peace. Be with our leaders and give them wisdom and guidance. Be with our church and give us the courage and strength to embody who Jesus is for us. And remind us, God, that we are called to love, that you show us how to love. And let our light shine before others. Give us the strength to show it to the world. We ask God your most holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. Now again, boys and girls, thank you for taking time out of your afternoon and evening to be with us this Christmas Eve, to hear the Christmas story, for taking part in the pageant, for taking part in activities with your family and friends that are gathered with you right now. And last but not least, boys and girls, I want to share a blessing, a Christmas blessing for you. And I want to wish you the merriest Christmas. So until we meet again, let these words fall on you and your family. May Christ, who by his incarnation, gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.